Hello guys, Matthew here and welcome back again to the Tactic YouTube channel. Up until now, I had a chance to try only one G4 GTX 1050 Ti graphics card and today that's going to change as I'm finally taking a closer look at another one, this one as you can see coming from Gigabyte, their G1 Gaming Edition. The product box in which it comes is basically the same as any other Gigabyte G1 gaming graphics card from the ongoing AMD's or Nvidia series. On the front you'll see some features pointed out in the bottom corner, while going to the back you'll find your usual minimum system requirements, a picture of video output layout and some detailed talk about the card's key features, like for example the WinForce 2X cooler design. Opening it up, once again there is nothing to be happy about when it comes to bundle as you'll only get a quick start guide and an optical disc with drivers and software. And here is the graphics card itself. The outer design of the card is pretty much spot on compared to any other model of the current generation Gigabyte's G1 gaming series. We have this black angular design of the plastic outer shroud coupled with orange highlights on it. This time they even came with a slight redesign but nothing too excessive. The shroud itself now actually hugs the cooling components even more than before as they made some changes on it so it's hard to see what's behind it on first sight in terms of heatsink and heat pipes. Upon on closer inspection you will find a 3 part aluminum heatsink coupled with 2 copper heat pipes in between and cooled off by 2 GB 90mm 3D active fans with unique fan blade design. Moving to the back, you'll be greeted by this cool looking metal backplate which Gigabyte actually slightly redesigned since the last time. Going to the side, you can see your for the G1 gaming series usual RGB Gigabyte logo and fan stop sign. So basically it's still fully equipped like its bigger brothers, although this is a more budget oriented GPU. Right next to that on the opposite end, we have a 1 6 pin PCI Express power connector for the power supply. Lastly, going to the front, you will find an array of video outputs and here Gigabyte went out of their way to deliver us an expanded non-reference setup with 3 HDMI's, 1 display port and 1 DVI-D. Kudos for that! Putting the card onto my benchmarking PC and turning everything on, right away I went in to check out its overclocking capabilities, since this is my second encounter with the GTX 1050 Ti. Gigabyte version didn't have any locked in memory or GPU limits, like MSI's one for example, so I managed to pass those 1911 MHz for the GPU and 2027 MHz for the memory, while factory overclocking settings were decently high to begin with, over 1800 MHz on the maximal boost clock speed thanks to Nvidia's GPU Boost 3.0 technology. With these settings that you see here, I was hitting around 1940 MHz on the GPU clock speed at its peak, but mostly around 1900 MHz, while the memory was stuck at 2252 MHz since I couldn't move the slider more than that in their extreme gaming application, but nevertheless it was still rock stable at that frequency. You could probably find a workaround for that so you can push it even more. I know it can be done with MSI's Afterburner application if you edit a certain settings document to enable unofficial limitless overclocking so to speak. In the end, as you will see by taking a look at the performance figures, overclocking resulted in quite a decent performance bump, definitely something worth considering and playing with it, even if you're a first timer. Putting that aside and taking a step back, overall performance of this card and the GeForce GTX 1050 Ti series in general easily covers the realm of 1080p gaming and that's with high graphical settings and basically most of it maxed out. You will see at least about 30 FPS in almost all titles, while some better optimal games are much closer or above 60 fps, like Overwatch and Star Wars Battlefront for example. I would say that judging by my 21 by 9 resolution results here, you could even play at 16 by 9 1440p resolution without a problem, especially since it has 4 gigabytes of video memory.
Taking a look at the temperatures, during idle you will see them being under 30 degrees Celsius and that's with the fans turned off as they don't work unless the GPU reaches a certain temperature threshold, that in this case being the usual 60 degrees Celsius. Even under load they were not turning on for the most part as you can see it here looking at this temperature curve during Fermax stress testing. It would reach 60 degrees Celsius, fans would turn on for a minute or two at around 1000 RPM and with that they would lower down the temperature to about 55 degrees celsius which would again cut off the fans for a minute or two and after that the cycle starts all over again i saw the same behavior when playing games too with temperatures roaming anywhere from 55 to 60 degrees celsius thankfully it seems that gigabyte tuned up the fan profile since my previous experience with their 3d active fan feature so that transition is much more fluid and refined bottom line the card is overall whisper quiet As for the LED lighting, if you watched any of my coverage of Gigabyte's G1 gaming series from before, you'll know that everything is done using Gigabyte's Extreme Gaming application, where you can beside the overclocking and fan options, also adjust the color of the LEDs in RGB spectrum and their lighting effect, or you can just completely turn them off. That's it guys for this time from me, thank you once again for checking out the unboxing and review of Gigabyte's GTX 1050 Ti G1 gaming graphics card. Feel free to toss me a thumbs up if you enjoyed this video, it helps me a lot, leave a comment down below if you have any questions about the product, and of course if you would like to see more content like this you can subscribe to the TechTQ YouTube channel or you can just check out some of my other videos from before.